So I'm going to be doing a video about my family tree DNA results. Um, so basically, I've already taken the Ancestry and the 23andMe DNA tests, and my mom had offered me to take this one. And I just um, said, yeah, out of curiosity, to see, um, compare and contrast the consistencies and whatnot. I believe it was cheaper. I think she used the DNA from my other tests because I didn't have to spit in a tube again or anything and it was only like I think $40 um, so that's pretty good um, so basically I got 56% European and 44% African which is pretty similar to the other tests um, it might be a couple percents off or whatnot, but it's it's pretty similar. I think the only difference is on the other tests I had um, on the 23 me had one percent Native American. On the Ancestry I had like one percent or like half a percent of Middle East. So I mean those were really small anyway. So I questioned whether they were accurate or not when reading those tests and if they are accurate you know it's kind of a long time ago so I mean maybe it won't show up on this one um so I got 56% Europe and of that it got I got 38% Western slash Central Europe which it says it goes from the Bay of Biscayne near Spain to Western Russia which is like South France to like Czechoslovakia area and all that and then I had 16% British Isles and 2% Scandinavia this was kind of different than my other tests um, first of all on my other tests I had like South Europe like Spain, Portugal, region, region I, I think it's called Iberian. I don't know if that went into the south, I mean the central western Europe or not, but it didn't show up on this test. And then also, um, my British was a lot larger on the Ancestry and the 23andMe. I mean, 23andMe kind of lumped together British and Irish and it was like 30% or something large um so I thought that was really interesting and then also what was kind of consistent is the 2% Scandinavia I think I had on my ancestry I had like a 1% trace region of Scandinavia so I mean, it was a trace region, so I wasn't sure, and then this, this test is kind of showing it, so it's kind of, sh I guess, kind of proves that I might have that ancestry, um, since on the ancestry DNA, trace regions are kind of iffy. Um, for the Africa, it didn't break up the countries or anything, but I didn't really need them to, because Africa's kind of tribes you know the the country borders are kind of made by other people so um i got 41 percent west africa and three percent southeastern africa which is really consistent with my 23andme i mean not my 23andme i think my ancestry because of my ancestry they had i had three percent southeastern like bantu i believe and that's consistent with that. It, it, the African on this was higher than all the other tests I took, but only by a little bit because I think on 23andMe I had like 42.5% African and then on Ancestry I had like 43. So that was the main big difference, but I mean a few percents off is not bad. My only thing is I, I'm, I question how many people take this test and how much DNA they have to compare it to um, because I had never really heard of it until I started doing these kinds of things and looking into it and watching YouTube videos and whatnot so 
I would definitely recommend this test to somebody who has already taken the other tests or want at least one of them. Like, I wouldn't recommend this to somebody who's just doing a DNA test for the first time because I don't... I question a little bit of it. I'm not sure. I just... I think it's something to compare to just to see the consistencies, especially if you've already taken one of the other tests, you can just use that DNA and only pay like 40 bucks for this one instead of like 100 for the other tests. So, yeah, thank you.